just so I don't confuse uh, Jim running the sound system, I forgot my microphone. Yeah. Um, I, I actually can get that at some point, I think maybe during our opening hymn, but um, for now I'll just um, make sure that I'm projecting so that you can hear me. Um, welcome. Welcome to St. Timothy. It's, a, it's good to be with all of you here as uh, we uh, enter into the second week of Advent. Um, we are waiting in this time, uh, waiting for our Lord and Savior, uh, waiting for God to come to our hearts today as God does indeed come again. Um, as we get started this morning, let me remind you that if, if you have a cell phone, put that on silent. And also, that if you have a chance, you can take out the response sheet and fill that out, place in the offering plate a little later in the service. Um, well, we have a couple things going on today. I see we have um, gifts in the back for uh, uh, Nancy's Project. I couldn't remember the first name. Thank you, Nancy's Project. And uh, also, um, many of you have already brought cookies. I see that we're just overflowing with cookies. Um, I hope that you're... Uh, ready to have some cookies after church today. So, um, that, that should be fun. Um, besides that, I think everything is in the bulletin and it should be relatively straightforward today um, as, as we worship together. Um, so, don't see anything else that we need to um, draw your attention to. Uh, as we begin, I invite you now to stand as you're able. Let us Confess our sins and hear God's promise of forgiveness to us once again. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high who guides us into peace. Amen. Amen. Let us come before God in confession. To you, O oh God, we lift up our souls. You know us through and through. We confess our sins to you. Remember not our sins. Remember us with your steadfast love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> Children of God, come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the first two verses of Light the Camp.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your Spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's word. Good morning. Well, um, I'm sure you've noticed that the church is decorated for Christmas a little bit, right? And uh, we're going to keep adding some things to the tree, but we already have some special ornaments on there. Those are ornaments that we um, are invited to take and then uh, buy something that, uh, for a donation for someone who could use a farm animal. Like, I see a chicken from here, and a goat, and another goat, and a little piglet. Right? You see those, some, some of those animals there? That's, that's one thing we can do during Christmas in this season is um, give to other people, help other people, right? Um, but 
Also, we have blue up here for Advent. We have an Advent wreath over here that we lit a while, little while ago. And then did you see in the very back when you came in, did you see the, um, the creche or the nativity scene? Did you see that? We always put up a nativity scene, don't we? Um, do you need to go take a look at it? No? Okay. Well, I'll tell you. You can look at it when you, when you leave. But there's not very much in it so far. There's only an angel standing outside. Because when we're telling the story, um, not all, all the characters show up at once, do they? First, the angel comes and makes an announcement. Now, today we're going to hear about John the Baptist. And we hear a story about how he was a, a, someone who um, like was a preacher, uh, kind of like me, maybe a little different than me, but um, he was out in the wilderness. You might say he's like in the woods or in the desert, okay? Uh, and um, he was a very interesting guy. But um, he, just like all of us, was born just a little baby, right? And you, do you know that we, we, have, we know his story about his being uh, born also in, in the Bible? Did you, did you know that? Have you ever heard the story about him being born? No? What? Okay, so he had parents whose names were Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah was a priest in the temple. And when he was doing his work in, in the temple, all of a sudden, an angel appeared. And he was very afraid because angels are very scary and they're very big and powerful. And the angel said that his wife was going to have a baby. Now, Zechariah said, I'm not sure I believe you because both my, myself and my wife are very old. We're too old to have babies. And the angel said, that's what you think, right? <laughs> Um, and, and in fact, um, because, because he, he had such a hard time believing, um, he, for the whole time that his wife was pregnant and waiting for the baby to be born, Zechariah couldn't speak. He couldn't speak a word. Um, that's really hard when you are like a preacher to not be able to speak. And that's what kind of what Zechariah was, right? So couldn't speak for nine months. And then his son was born and they asked first Elizabeth, what's his name? And she said, John. And nobody believed her. But she said, well, ask Zechariah. And Zechariah wrote down his name is John. And then he could speak again. And when he could speak, he praised God. That's the first, very first thing he did. And he he sang this song that we have in the Gospel of Luke. We're going to sing that in just a few minutes. Um, but I want to tell you the very last part of it. He said, And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. So already, just after his son was born, he was saying, you are going to be a prophet and you're going to tell people about God, and God's salvation, God's healing, God's love. Can you imagine that even when you were a baby, God would say something about, about, about that like that, about you too? Yeah. That's, that's what we get to be because when we are... When we are brought into God's family, even when we're babies, we, we get to hear that, um, that amazing responsibility and that we have that, that ability and that gift, even when we're young, even when we're old, and everything in between. We get to share God's love because that's what God gives us. God gives us lots of love to share. So, um, well, John is today, and pretty soon we're going to be talking about the birth of another baby, right? Yeah. So, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this season that we prepare 
for the coming of your Son, Jesus our Lord. And we thank you for the, the gift of John. We give you thanks that as you inspired him, that you also inspire all of us. Fill us with your love today and help us to share it in our words and in our actions, wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. A reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. and confirmation of the gospel, 
For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that, you love, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. When Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated.
You know, I know that uh, here in our area, we, we do occasionally like to complain about uh, traffic, whether it's, you know, the evening rush hour going north on Highway 1 or uh, Highway 68 going east. Um, and I, I know it can be slow. I, I, I've been in it many times myself. We complain, of course, but we also realize that we've got nothing on like the Bay Area or uh, Los Angeles. Um, in those places, uh, there is actually no rush hour since the evening commute time lasts for many hours, right? Um, is there ever a time that you can drive in LA without hitting some congestion? Uh, maybe in the middle of the night, but even that's not guaranteed. I know I've been there somewhere around midnight or one in the morning, and it's just surreal because all you see is brake lights. How could there be so many people that are up this late, right? But I'll tell you, my commute um, takes the uh, north uh, through a particularly nasty section of road known as the Sinol Grade. Uh, my usual travel time for these seven miles or so of uh, Interstate 680 is about 45 minutes. Um, now there is relief in sight uh, in the form of this massive road widening project. Truly massive because like, um, like other roads that you've been on that go through go through hills, go through mountains. Um, this highway is cut through the hills, into the hills, right? And um, so huge amounts of earth have to be cleared away in order to widen this highway. This requires, in turn, that they, they not just clear away this hill, but also build these, these massive retaining walls so, you know, huge amounts of concrete and they're boring holes deep into the hillside to hold everything in place. Um, the, the overcrossings, overcrossings have to be built, new overcrossings, and the old ones removed because they're not long enough. Um, it's just, you know, these massive earth moving machines and the drilling and pounding and scooping and shoveling. Uh, it's been going on for months, and it will go on for another two years, I think. Hmm. And all the while, cars are traveling up this road, and the cranes are swinging these girders overhead. It is um, quite the sight. When I see a project like that, I, I do have a sense of wonder. It reminds me a little bit of like how I was when I was a kid and liked to play with the Tonka trucks. Um, but it, it is truly remarkable, truly remarkable to notice what we are able to do as a species, what we have done, what we have built, and what we are still building, right? It is remarkable and, and amazing. And, and I'm sure that you've noticed these, these marvels of road construction yourself, um, we have, you know, these washouts of Highway 1 and then miraculously uh, this, this road gets rebuilt. It is um, pretty amazing. I think of all these things as I hear Luke's quotation of the prophet Isaiah. Now think about this. When, when Isaiah wrote this over 2,000 years ago. There was no way that he could imagine the machinery, the technology, the ingenuity that we have in our time. And yet, and yet, this is, seems to be what he's imagining. He's imagining something like the superhighways that we have today. He's imagining a a superhighway to speed the exiles back to Jerusalem. The same exiles that a generation before had been just ripped away 
from everything they knew, their family, their friends, and everything else, and, and carried off to Babylon. But even as Isaiah describes this um, massive road building project, this super highway, he, he was, of course, not thinking about it in a literal way, right? Uh, I think we can get that. And instead, he, he uses this imagery, this description, as a way to say that God will accomplish the impossible, the absolutely impossible, to get those exiles back to God. And, and this is important. God will not just get them back to Jerusalem, but back to God's own heart. Because when they were carried off into exile, they really felt they had lost everything, and they had really lost God altogether. God was going to get those exiles back, and the way home was going to be easy. The way home was going to be easy. That is what Isaiah is proclaiming. Now, as Luke quotes it, there's a, there's a certain irony in this whole thing because uh, both Luke and the other gospel writers, you know, Isaiah is thinking about how people are going to get back through the wilderness to Jerusalem. Now, as John is proclaiming salvation, the healing of God, the way to God, the way of God is out of Jerusalem, out of all the established settlements of, of the region, and into the wilderness. The wilderness was strangely the destination now. For the early Christians that heard this, um, maybe this all made sense, because by the time that Luke wrote, Jerusalem had been just wiped off the face of the map, right? Furthermore, I mean, I just, I'm just guessing that those folks um, didn't have much connection to Jerusalem in the first place. That wasn't their home. Um, this was already a diverse community, mixture of Jewish and Gentile followers. Nearly none of them had ever called Jerusalem home. But, but that's a little bit beside the point. The point is this good news. This good news. God was coming for them. God was coming for them. God would always come for them. God will always come to bring us home, to bring us to God's own heart. As we wait for God's coming in this season of Advent, we hear this good news. God will make a way for us. God wants to make the journey easy for us. It's this last part that we might find most surprising, that God makes the way easy. John the Baptist announces to us today that God is breaking in, releasing us from everything that keeps us distant from God. Our readings are all today all about John the Baptist, but, but John, you know, he never lets this be about himself. He always points beyond himself. And even his own father, his own father at his birth saying the same. He says, And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Here's the thing. I, I know that we might mishear when we hear the words repentance or forgiveness. We might mishear those words. What God does, see, is more important than what we do. What God does is more important than what we do. It's not so much about our rep repentance as it is what God does first. Right? God acts first. God forgives. God releases. And God heals. God is paving that super highway from us to God. 
or from God to us. And, and we call that superhighway Jesus the Christ. Through Jesus the Christ, we receive this promise. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. What is this salvation, this healing? Well, as, as Jesus embodies love, teaches love, lives and dies love, and then calls us to trust and follow, we might have some idea of what this healing might look like in us. People sharing God's love together, transforming a world not with massive road projects, but with God's generous welcome, hope, peace, joy, and love. God makes the way easy, but of course we tend to make the way difficult. God offers us forgiveness and gives us an abundance of love, but we treat those things as if they're conditional. They're all conditional. We act as if love is in short supply. We put conditions on others and decide based on their moral failings, which we're so, we're so ready to see, uh, that they're not good enough. Sometimes we look at a person and just based on whatever external factor we see that, and we decide that they are a threat to us. They're not like us. We reject them. Sometimes we do this. It's so ingrained in us that we do it without even noticing that we've done it. I see all that we humans are capable of, like those massive building projects and wonders of technology. It is truly remarkable. I wonder what else we might do what else might we do? We are capable of great achievements, but also great harm. Could we also be capable of seeing this world without borders? Of seeing this planet as more than just a source of raw material where we exploit for profit? Instead, see it as our home where God uh, has infused all of it with God's very self. Can we see these people, this planet, and all life within it as things worth sacrificing our own selves for, worth loving? For the sake of love, yes. Indeed, we have been given this love freely and without constraint, we have been released from the little mindset of tribalism and all other forms of self-hatred. Let us leave it behind. Let us leave it behind because God is coming to us again. Let us leave it behind that body and mindset of scarcity, of stumbling in the dark as we hear Zechariah also prophesy, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. God has prepared the way let us walk on it.
As we await the coming of Christ, we pray in hope for the church, the world, and all of creation. Prepare your church to share the good news, life-giving God. Put your word within us and dwell among us. Send us out to proclaim the mercy and salvation that abides in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protect the creation, life-giving God. Sustain the mountains and hills. Restore the rivers. Give us wisdom and compassion to care for wilderness areas and urban ecosystems. Move us to care for your creation in all its forms and richness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Purify the hearts of all people, life-giving God. Remove the hate that, lives, that lives within us and among us. Mold us into peacemakers. Raise up leaders rooted in your love and fed by your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Comfort all who hurt life-giving God. Wrap them in your tender care. Remember the forgotten and send us out to share your love with them. Be with the wandering, the worried, and the woeful, and especially with Peter and Mary Jean Kracht and Wanda Trudell and Randy and Barbara Balliston and Dave Fleischman Sr. and Bill and Mary Lee and JJ and Gloria and Riley Ann and Lorene and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bless this congregation, life-giving God. Give strength and joy to worship leaders, musicians, and our altar guild as they prepare the way for the celebration of the Christ child's coming among us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember the generations who have shown us your faithfulness, life-giving God. Shine your light on those who mourn and prepare us for that day when we will see your face, see you face to face. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we bring to you these prayers and those unspoken, in the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. And also with you. Let us share that peace.
Well, let me invite your attention for a couple minutes to our announcements for this week. Uh, and this time of year, it seems that we always have a lot of announcements. So uh, let me, let me uh, start off with right after church today, we will be having a, uh, a gathering where uh, you're invited to uh, make some Christmas uh, ornaments that are uh, monograms of Christ, reminders of uh, who Christ is for us that you might hang on your tree. Um, so that will be right after the service today, and uh, Matt Schultz will be, will be leading that. Um, also this week, uh, we have an Altered Guild luncheon coming, and um, there is information about that on page 12 of, of the bulletin. But I also to say that if you would like to come, be sure to speak with Marjorie about that so we can make reservations. Anything else that we should say? No. Okay. 12.30 on Tuesday. <laughs> and that will be at Tarpus, yes. Uh, also, then uh, Wednesday, we have, uh, have Advent Midweek Prayer, and we have two times for that. The noon time, we have a, a simple lunch, and then a time of prayer and healing together. And uh, then at 5.30, also again, is time for, for prayer, no lunch, at 5.30. Um, if you would like to come, especially at the, the noon time, uh, please let Ida Barber know so that uh, she has enough food for, for all to come. Um, okay. Then also property committee meets this week, and we have our men's breakfast on Saturday. We have a work day on Saturday. We'll be doing a lot of church cleanup, uh, getting ready for, uh, for Christmas. And uh, then Saturday also, we have the St. Timothy Walkers group, and it's the Monterey Mosey. And you'll, you'll see a number of flyers around, um, posted around. Yeah, in the back as well. Thank you. Jillian has one there. Uh, I hope you can come and check that out. You know, uh, get to walk pretty much as much as you're comfortable with, and um, I think that uh, Dave and, and maybe Julie, Jillian too has some plan, plan a nice route with learning some things that we may not know you, no matter how long you've lived here. So um, it should be a lot of fun. Upcoming, uh, we have a number of things that are coming up. Um, let me say especially that uh, Welpa is having a holiday tea uh, a week from Tuesday and uh, Welpa is going caroling on Friday the 21st. Um, so, um, lots of announcements, and uh, I'm sure that there's a couple more. So, anything else that we should hear? Connie. So, you've probably noticed the ornaments on the uh, tree, and these are all for uh, donations to Elka, uh, good gifts. So, what we'd like you to do is pick out the ornament that you would like to, for the donation that you would like to make. You can either send the money in yourself, or you can give it to me, and I will send it in. So, um, but we need to remove those ornaments from the tree today because uh, Alter Guild will be decorating the tree with other ornaments uh, next Sunday. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right, uh, Matt first, and then Adrian. <laughs> Go right ahead. Okay, okay. So um, I just became aware of the Chris nuns um, in this church recently. I mean, I admired them and wondered where they came from. And, and uh, so I don't know if you all know the stories, but um, it start, the Chris Nunn tradition started in 1957 in a church in Virginia. Um, a daughter of missionaries, Mrs. Simpson, um, was distressed about the commercialization of Christmas. And so she didn't, and including all the Christmas decorations, so she was talking to her pastor and the pastor said, 
Well, you, if you want to volunteer to do something different, you go right ahead and you can be in charge of the Christmas tree. So she did. And that started the tradition of Christmas. Um, so I, um, I, I don't know who was involved in creating them for this tree, but I think I saw a bulletin from 2004. And so I know some people in this church got together and decided to do that. And I, yeah, June, I thought, I, it's been the altar deal group. Years yes. ago, we had a lot of ladies in the altar deal group. And we would meet once a year and repair the older ones and make new ones. Okay. So that's as far as I know that the altar deal is being So I just wanted to raise that up so people are a little bit more aware of this tradition. Um, and, and, and so this morning, I went into the, into the box of the Christmas and I laid some out on the table. So. Um, I don't expect a big turnout this afternoon, but if after church you want to see what some of those Christmas are, and you want to see the meaning, because they all have they all have a meaning. And there's there are symbols of Christianity, um, and I've got some information about the meaning of, of these Christmas. And then um, you know they can be crude or they can be fancy. This is a fancy one that was made by the ladies in the church. This is a crude one that we just made downstairs. Northrop's going to take it home. He actually cut this out of styrofoam. It's got glitter on it. Um, so these can be, you know, they can last a year or they can last longer. Um, but it's a wonderful tradition, and I just wanted to um, call some attention to it. Oh, there's apple cider downstairs, too, if anybody, or um, mold, um, spiced apple cider, if people want to come downstairs. Awesome. All right, very good. Thank you. Yes. Yes, these are for you to take home. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Good, good question. And Adrian. Um, some of you, or all of you that are long, long-term members here, might remember Mary and Terry West. And um, I'm on Facebook with Mary. She wrote something a couple weeks ago, and you haven't been here, but she said that our brother died, and I don't know if it was her brother, Terry's, or anything more, but just keep them up in your prayers. Please. Okay, thank you. And then your 2019 union books are in your boxes in the office. So, and also there's a lot of other things in boxes in there. So if you could... Be sure your to check your mailbox in the lounge. Thank you, yes. And so I have a couple other announcements about giving related things. First thing, on page 11, we have a reminder that um, if you have not returned your giving estimate for 2019, please do so as soon as you can. Uh, we, we will be uh, following up more, with more direct reminders, but of course, if you can get yours back, uh, then that's one person less on our list. That would be a great help to us. We do have extra envelopes, uh, whole packets, that is. Um, that are in the back of the church, I believe. So uh, be sure to pick one up if you haven't returned yours yet. Also, let me remind you that December is a faith giving month. And um, faith giving is that we, we decided that we would, uh, once a quarter, we would encourage people to give one extra week's offering. And so if you are able to do that, uh, this is being the last quarter of the month our uh, last month of the quarter, this is a faith giving month, and so um, uh, it's time to do that. Um, and the last thing, let me say, is that we have on Christmas Eve tradition of having lots of music, um, solos and instrumental music and uh, everything else. If you would like to offer um, a musical gift or um, I don't know, maybe something else that is not necessarily musical, but creative. Um, please speak with Desma about that. And um, we, we need to have all those uh, to us by next Sunday so that we can put together our Christmas Eve service. Okay, and Just yes. Just one more thing. Uh, next Sunday will be the last Sunday for the food era. So we've got one empty barrel there, so anybody can help pull that up. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, do join us after worship today for a time together to uh, just share our lives together uh, over lots of, lots of, lots of cookies. Um, um, 
And every once in a while, I like to remind you that in our bulletin, we put a couple of things that uh, are, are for your, in, in your time during the week. We list the upcoming commemorations that are on the calendar, and we also uh, uh, print a gospel message that comes from the, uh, our publishing house of the ELCA. But on the commemorations uh, this week, I noticed that John of the Cross, uh, renewer of the church, is listed for Thursday as a commemoration. It just so happens that if you go to the E. Cantori concert this evening, you'll hear some of his own spiritual writings set to music um, in a beautiful work that was composed by the conductor of E. Cantori. And they're performing tonight at uh, 8 p.m. at the Carmel Mission. I heard them last night and it is a beautiful concert. So uh, if that appeals to you, uh, there you have it. So let us now uh, move on with our worship and we come now to the table. We come and we receive the, the bread and wine of communion. We receive the body and blood, the very life of Christ. Uh, that we may also be Christ throughout our lives. Um, we come, and yet we also realize that it is God indeed coming to us through this meal. Um, God always comes to us to reconnect us to God's very heart. So come and receive. Uh, we will be communing at the rail today. We're missing a little rail over here, so I'll just invite you to uh, fill as there is space on either side. Um, after receiving, you may return to your places by way of the side aisles. So let us now prepare the table as we bring forth our offerings for today. Let us give. 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending in. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, the beginning and the end our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought our on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the, of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your Spirit on us, and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the, your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray, as Jesus taught us, our Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God fills the hungry with good things. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks that this bread and cup we have feasted, that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May God direct your ways in peace. May he make you abound in love for one another and for all and strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.